Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. I am Jennifer Nagemeyer, the Director of Graduate Career Services and Alumni Relations at the Ford School. We're delighted that you are joining us today for this webinar around uh, careers in public policy and the services that Graduate Career Services provides to students to assist in that. Uh, so we're going to have the opportunity to hear from four uh, very distinguished alumni, and um, they're going to share a little bit about their work. They're going to talk a little bit about the impact of their work, how the Ford School prepared them for that, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the services that Career Services offers to students to assist in your career path if you choose to come to the Ford School. So um, we want to hear your questions. So feel free to use the chat room uh, to ask questions. We'll, we'll have the panelists talk at first and then we'll um, open up, we'll leave some time at the end for those questions. So I, my hope is that you will feel the love that all of our panelists have towards the Ford School and, and get a sense of who we are as a school and the community feeling that we have here and how our, our panelists have grown uh, in their time that they were at Ford and beyond. So I wanna uh, thank all the panelists for taking the time to be part of this and I'm gonna turn it over to them in a minute. But first I wanna share a little bit about what, um, how we think about graduate career services at the Ford School. We talk about our services as providing four main functions. We provide uh, first career information, helping you explore what you can do with this policy degree. Uh, and then information and then connections, right? So connected to employers, uh, we're connected to our alumni. In fact, alumni relations is embedded right within graduate career services because there's such an interrelation and interconnection uh, between our students and, and our alumni who stay very much connected to the school. And then we offer lots of strategy. So how do you get from here to there in terms of the tools that you need for applying to jobs, in terms of your interviewing skills and negotiation skills, uh, and just understanding strategies that may be different in different sectors. And all of that is surrounded by support. So we are supporting students in the highs and lows that are inevitable when you don't get the, the internship or the job that you really wanted uh, or it falls through because of COVID. Uh, and we will support you and help you find alternate plans and, um, and, and see opportunities. And then we also provide uh, significant financial support for those of you that are in pursuing the MPP program. There is a required internship and oftentimes those are unpaid and we have quite a bit of support uh, to assist students in defraying some of those costs. I am also involved in the Ford School's leadership initiative and I hope we'll have some time to talk uh, about that as well. But the goal with the leadership, if you think about the toolkit that you get through the curriculum here uh, is, is one really important aspect of your marketability, but the leadership initiative is also about how you show up with that toolkit. So do you have the emotional intelligence and the self-awareness uh, and the ability to lead self, lead others, lead institutions uh, with that toolkit? And so we'll, we'll talk about that and the panelists will have things to add to that as well. So with that, um, you have their bios. We're gonna drop those in the chat if you haven't already seen, those, seen them. But I'm gonna turn it over to the panelists now and I'm gonna ask each of them to share a little bit about their current work, the organization they're in, uh, what their role is, and how they think about the desired impact of what they're, um, what they're trying to do in this work. I think one of the things you'll hear is that their career paths and sectors are very different, uh, but the common thread is that everyone is wanting to make an impact in some way. And so, I'm going to let them share the, their stories on that. So with that, um, Megan, I'm wondering if you would start and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'd love to. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I know I can't see most of your faces, but glad you're all here. Um, my name is Megan Nestor. I uh, graduated from Ford 
I guess a year and a half ago. Um, and since then I've been working um, as a data analytics and research strategist at Fourth Economy Consulting. So we're a consulting firm based out of Pittsburgh, but we work nationally um, to support community and economic development. Um, and I get the joy of kind of mixing data analytics and research and strategy in my work, um, probably largely because of all of the skills I gained at Ford. I'm able to do both uh, well, which is great and has let me do this really cool role of, of the hybrid of both. Um, and in terms of the impact of the work, um, even before COVID, I, you know, I think part of what drew me to Fourth Economy was that it was really a, um, a, an organization that collaboratively works with communities to help you know, figure out strategies to help them thrive um, economically and otherwise. And um, with COVID, we've been, uh, I guess I would say lucky in some sense that we get to, we've been able to work on some really interesting, cool, impactful projects. So a lot of communities have come to us with help identifying um, you know, recovery strategies and ways to help their community get through um, what COVID is bringing to them. Um, so that's been really um, cool, interesting, um, impactful, if not, if, not, if not difficult work to do, so. Awesome, thank you and welcome. Luz, how about you? Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Always uh, happy to come back and talk to 40s and prospective 40s. Um, it, you know, it really is a good place um, to find and meet people and make friends, um, but you know, every, everything else uh, in between as well. Um, I am currently the research manager as well as small business services manager with Wayne County um, Economic Development. Wayne County is the largest county uh, in the state of Michigan and also home to the city of Detroit, um, as well as a, a big chunk of the Detroit metro area. Um, currently, I am managing most of our economic development response to COVID. So um, since March have managed a number of um, small business and service sector uh, grant programs, you know, upwards of $70 million worth of grants to small businesses across Wayne County. Currently oof, trying to get um, through uh, the last push of our CARES Act funds towards um, service sector employees that have been impacted by the most recent shutdown. So restaurant workers, hospitality, entertainment, um, getting $6 million out to them. And, you know, this work has largely been made possible both by the skills I gained at Ford and the connections that I made there um, that have allowed me to, to connect with people doing similar work um, so, yeah, mostly working in economic development, small business support services since I left Ford. Awesome. Thank you. Ali. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Ali Abazid, and I am currently a public health advisor at the National Institutes of Health. I graduated with my MPP and my MPH uh, from the university in 2017 and was fortunate to have been selected as a presidential management fellow uh, that year. It was, uh, I think, a week before Trump's inauguration that I received notice that I was selected. Um, so talk about a really interesting time to join the federal service. Um, through the PMF, I was, uh, I, I, I began my PMF journey at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, where I've worked in the Office of the Secretary. I've worked at the Assistant Secretary for Policy and Evaluation, which is basically the health policy shop of the federal government. Um, I've worked in the Office of Refugee Resettlement. I've worked at the NIH. Um, and I'm just a horribly disciplined person, or I guess to put it another way, a, a bit more favorable maybe uh, to myself, is uh, I, I, I tend to sort of dabble in interdisciplinary work that allows me to uh, see how different pieces mesh together. And I think that that's uh, uh, part and parcel of my training at the Ford School, which is uh, health policy is one thing, social policy is one thing, education policy is one thing. But uh, to be honest, I see those all as central to what I do every day, even at the NIH. Um, and I'm really excited to be working on some uh, just groundbreaking new work to sort of bridge the world of science uh, and policy, especially during this COVID pandemic, because I do have the tragic privilege of being at the NIH during this once in a 
century event. And so uh, every every day we go to work and we get to work on the pandemic. And uh, I think all Americans are better for uh, what we're doing at the NIH. And I look forward to sharing a bit more as uh, today goes on. So thanks. Thank you. Claire. <clears throat> All right, so I'll hop in here with more health policy. Um, my name is Claire Hutchinson. I'm currently the Associate Vice President of Public Policy at Humana, which is a large Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and so today I spend a lot of my time thinking about prescription drugs and also spend a lot of time thinking about the pandemic like most of you. Uh, but I think one thing I'll just illustrate in terms of my personal experience at the Ford School um, was that, you know, a obviously lots of opportunities and I think that Ali said it really well of you know different policy areas provide you with different perspectives and I think that that was one thing that really equipped me well um, for thinking about my job today and kind of roles that I've played in the past. Um, I also kind of personally believe that policy is only as effective as the individuals who receive the outcomes of those interventions. Um, so upon graduation from the Ford School, I spent a quite a bit of time uh, at Accenture in consulting, really thinking about when you change provisions in the Medicaid program or you change provisions in the Medicare program, what does that mean to the in individuals who receive those services and how can we operationalize them and implement them in a way that is most effective for them? Um, not necessarily most effective for the system, but for the individuals who the system is designed to support. Um, and I think that there were lots of pieces of my Ford School education that really made it possible for me to bring multiple perspectives to the table when having those conversations. Um, so I think uh, you've heard from all of us really trying to think about who receives that, uh, you know, the benefit of a particular policy at the end of the day. And I really think that that's a, a lens that I was given from the board school. Awesome, thank you. You know, it's interesting, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I wasn't expecting this to be um, so heavy on COVID. And yet um, I'm also thinking, who is there anyone else I could have invited that wouldn't be talking about the impact of COVID? And I think the answer to that is no, like that the reality of that, this is a policy that, or this is an issue that policy has needed to address and that you've all been equipped to be able to adapt and jump on those issues uh, and need it. The world needs this. So kind of, kind of an interesting um, outcome in the panel that I wasn't thinking about. So um, I wanna build on something Lou's said about the value of connections and, um, like you specifically talked about the, 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 the people that you met and the value of the, all of those opportunities to connect and how that's impacting in your work. And so I'm wondering if each of you can maybe talk a little bit about the, the sense of what stands out from your time at Ford that's helping you make the difference that you just talked about. How, what, how did we equip you in, in, in whatever ways? Yeah. I think for me, definitely um, some hard and soft skills um, obtained in the classroom and through group projects. But um, I, I think particularly the connections, especially working in local government. Um, I know people all over the country working for either cities or counties that are managing the same exact response that I'm managing right now. Um, and um, including as part as a Bonnet Fellow. So I was part of the Bonnet Fellowship at the Ford School, um, which is a great program. Um, it did um, kind of help me put my foot in the door into local government via the internship at the mayor's office, which I will tell you the day after I graduated, the mayor's office was calling me and saying, hey, we need you to come interview for this. <laughs> and so that was great, but also, um, as, as this pandemic hit us and I was trying to figure out how to run programs, um, I knew I could call people all over the country who were doing the same thing and ask, you know, basic things from like, hey, where are you hosting your grant application to how are you guys interpreting these, uh, this, these regulations related to the CARES Act or how are you guys using these funds um, in a very manageable way. And most recently, as we were launching our um, grant program for service workers, we were trying to figure out some questions regarding inclusion of immigrants and kind of the regulations that go into that. And I quickly thought, 
I actually know someone in the Los Angeles mayor's office from Bonnet, and they are doing the same exact thing. And, and it's LA, they have most certainly thought about this. Um, and, and it was a quick phone call. It was just having those people all over the country who, are, who love to do the same work and they get it. And, um, and you know that they're gonna have some feedback for you. Awesome, Megan. Yeah, I'll um, maybe talk a little bit about a different kind of connection and how it's impacted my work. But um, like Luz, I, inter I interned at the Detroit mayor's office um, in my summer in between my first and second years. Um, and I had the opportunity to work on a feasibility study for universal pre-K for the city, um, which was, which I used like everything I had learned at Ford and more <laughs> to kind of put some of that work together. Um, but what's what's been pretty cool about my work now is that um, I, I've had I've been able to talk about that opportunity and use it to actually kind of bring in um, more work for our firm. So um, I just finished an economic impact analysis of um, the childcare industry for Allegheny County, where Pittsburgh sits. Um, I've been doing some childcare work in Newport, Rhode Island, and this is all because of. Um, you know, the, this particular work that I did in Detroit that's on my resume that I'm able to talk about and showcase a little bit um, has been really interesting to, to potential clients and has been a good way for me to kind of find my niche at my firm as well in terms of what I'm working on. Maybe I can just continue, uh, I'll go next because uh, I'll continue the sort of thread of working in Detroit and what happened afterwards. I did my policy internship at the city of Detroit health department um, and they didn't want to let go of me. In fact, I, 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 after my internship ended, I ended up doing pro bono work while I was a 30 year graduate student uh, helping uh, continue the work that we were doing on infant mortality rates in the city, uh, on, on, on reversing water shutoffs, on thinking about new modes of refugee resettlement. This was in 2016, so right before things sort of uh, got bad for the resettlement regime. Um, you know, beyond that, though, having been in the federal government now for about three years, um, the Ford degree is so marketable. And it, it, it's something that people know, um, it, you, if you have the Ford name sort of ascribed to you, your resume, um, that they're going to get someone who's really good at a lot of things. That could be policy analysis, that could be policy writing, um, that could be on briefing principles, um, all of those three things I've done. And I've gotten you know, feedback indicating that this is really good stuff. Um, uh, you know, Forgive the immodesty, but we're here to sort of talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it well. Um, and I think it's really important for you all to know that you know, there are skills, especially hard skills that you probably gain at any policy school. Um, you know, how to write briefs, how to sort of differentiate between different kinds of analyses for, for, for briefing principles. But I think the distinct difference of the Ford School is uh, how robust a reputation it has. Um, and I think the quantitative element too is something that everyone around the country knows. You know, at the uh, office of the uh, secretary in HHS, I work, I work with a ton of Harvard grads, Johns Hopkins grads, and you know, these are folks from the Kennedy School, from PhD programs. Um, and, 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 and there are so many Ford alums there, um, which I think speaks to the distinct uh, skills that you gain in terms of being able to translate policy for diverse stakeholders and being able to sort of uh, shine above the fray because you know it's it's really hard to be noticed in the federal government any place, let alone at a place that is known for its health policy bond fight. So um, I think it's it, it's really interesting. Uh, my experience has been really interesting to see. Boy, you know, people really know what the Ford School difference is, and uh, I've had the great fortune of living that the last few years. And I'll kind of hop onto that um, with a very actually similar experience. So prior to going to the Ford School, I worked in the federal government at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. And as I was weighing my options and thinking about what I wanted to do, it, one of the things that was really challenging for me was, hey, do I want to do a part-time program or do I want to do a full-time program? And thinking about what that meant, not only from my work experience perspective, but my ability to really dig in um, to a graduate program. Um, and, you know, lots of mentors who I, this was a long time ago at this point in time, 2012, uh, 2011 and 2012, a lot of mentors that are still, you know, great advisors to me today said, Michigan, go to the Ford School. Um, and that's something that I definitely, you know, don't, 
<laughs> uh, it was kind of the best advice that I'd ever been given. And then I think um, kind of more of a personal element that I'll kind of share. Um, I graduated in 2014 and I have a lot of friends that I'm still very close with from the Ford School. And I think the one other thing that you may not kind of put on your list in terms of things to think about is the network that you build with your classmates. Um, and I think that while some of my closest friends may be doing things in international policy that's totally and completely different from me, um, they are always great sounding boards for, for professional advice. Um, and I think that that's another thing that um, the Ford School Network really brings to you as part of your experience is a lot of different people with different perspectives that really can be that. Uh, I always think of having a professional board of advisors. Um, and so a lot of my four school classmates are on my board of advisors when I'm thinking about different career decisions. And that's something that is, um, you know, definitely got a lot of hard quantitative skills, but I think that it put that in a softer column that's really hard to quantify in terms of the value. Awesome. And Claire, um, before you mute, there's a question that was dropped in the chat about uh, did any of you have, take certificate programs? Um, but one thing we haven't talked about yet are dual degrees. So I'm wondering if you could talk about the takeaways of dual degrees and any of you that have done either certificates or duals. Um, sure, I'll chime in. I did. I did not do a dual. Um, okay. No, I was a. I was a, a single degree in. <laughs> but I. But I will say that one of the things for me that was really attractive about Ford and Michigan was that. There are lots of opportunities to take classes in other programs. And so I think that that um, maximizing the value of Michigan is definitely something that is very unique to the Ford Schools policy program as opposed to other places. So, um, you know, if you're really interested in, in administrative law for some reason and want to get into the regulatory world, you can go and take a, you know, the leg rag class at the law school. I was not brave enough for that, but some people were. Um, you know, I took a bunch of different classes at the business school that were really focused on the business of healthcare. So learning about that perspective in addition to the more um, a policy-based perspective. Also took classes at the School of Public Health, brought a clinical lens in. So really thinking about um, as you're trying to pull together the various different you know, tools that really help the policy area that you're interested in, um, think about it in terms of the scale of not only the hard skills and those kind of relationships that you'll build at Ford, but also kind of the value and the power of Michigan, which um, is something that you also can't quantify in a lot of ways. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I have a mental block, right? I think of you as public health because I know you took classes up there. So I'm wondering, um, Megan, Luz, in particular, can you also speak to that interdisciplinary and, and certificates or uh, duals? Yeah, I did. I did do a dual um, master's with applied economics. Um, and mostly, you know, did a lot of math that I'm never ever going to do again in my life. Um, but it was a very quantitatively heavy program. And I think more than anything, it's a really good signal anywhere that I go that you can give me all of the numbers and the data and that I will figure it out. <laughs> um, and, and I do that a lot for my team now. I'm usually the person who's looking at the numbers and trying to figure out if we're meeting our goals, if um, you know, with the grants, um, you know, demographically, what the distribution's looking like, what it needs to look like, or setting targets. Um, so that has been really helpful. I will also say, like Claire said, you know, having access to so many other schools and program, I, I did also um, take a number of courses in um, urban planning. And I took that legal aspects of urban planning class, which is supposed to be really hard and it is, but I took it pass fail um, because I just really wanted to understand it. And I can sit there and hold my own now in conversations with planners as someone in economic development, that is so important. And just having taken that class to be able to sit there and, and say, yes, I understand zoning. And yes, I understand all of these other things, right of ways and um, all of these other things that come into the conversation when we're talking about um, planning and uh, development in the city. Um, so I think that was really valuable, of course, as well. 
Yeah, like like um Claire and Luz, I took I didn't uh I don't have a certificate, but I took courses all over the place. Um so some schools you've already heard, but also I took a graphic design course in the School of Information, which has been really helpful as I do data visualization. Um, I took classes in the School of Ed and the School of Social Work, um, the School of, of Planning. And I think uh, in my work now, it just it's just not single focus, right? We're doing lots and lots of different projects, um, sometimes focused on transportation or maybe utilities, so kind of typical urban policy, but then there's education work that we're doing and workforce work. Um, so I think certainly having having taken courses from all over the place and learning from my peers who had previous careers and previous expertise in different industries and different buckets of, of policy expertise um, have all really helped me kind of um, be able to not only know a little bit about a lot, um, but also kind of know okay, if I don't know a little bit about this, I do know how to figure it out. Um, so certainly, uh, you know, board is interdisciplinary, but then also the, the, that was a huge draw for me to Michigan as well, was that I'd be able to take courses in some different schools. Awesome. So I wanna shift gears a little bit. We've talked a lot about the toolkit and it's clear you guys are all using it in the impactful work that you are doing. Um, but Ali, I'm wondering if you could lead us off in talking about your own leadership development and how how Ford and the opportunities uh, helped you grow as a leader? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I, just to echo Claire's comments, I think that the genuine friendships that you develop with your Ford School classmates um, is something that I'm, I, I still tap into and take advantage of, you know, three years out. Um, I, anytime I want to engage in a sort of a robust policy debate, I know I can count on my Ford School uh, classmates for that. And, and this genuinely happens, you know, maybe a couple times a week. Um, I think beyond that, there are um, a couple sort of, so I, I did do a dual degree. I did a master's of public uh, health and to my public policy degree. Um, and as I alluded to, I was, I was fortunate to have been selected as a PMF. Um, the, you know, Jennifer and the Ford School and the graduate services, um, the, the support that they offered was just absolutely essential um, for me to have the kind of experience that I have today in the federal government. And because I have that comparison of the School of Public Health, and I, I, I love the School of Public Health, nothing against them, um, but the level of support just wasn't the same. Um, after I was selected, you know, Jennifer reached out maybe within a day or two, um, and she uh, and others at the Graduate uh, Career Services, uh, they sent me a portfolio of packets of information of people in the federal government that are Ford School alumni, other grads from the university that are alumni. Um, and I landed so many interviews at the State Department across HHS, uh, at the EPA, because of those lists that Jennifer provided. And so I think the leadership development is just, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it, it, there's no comparison for it. And I know this because I've spoken to others who've, you know, gotten the PMF from other programs around the country, um, and they just didn't have that level of support. They were sort of swimming uh, in the sea without any kind of guidance. And uh, I had a huge, huge advantage because of the resources resources that Jennifer and the Graduate Career Services offered. Um, so I, 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 I'm really grateful for that. And that's why when Jennifer asks uh, for any kind of support, I'm always there because that's the kind of network we have where we support one another at all times. And it continues, whether it's three years out of grad school or 20 years out of grad school. Others on that, how have you grown personally uh, and how did Ford help you with that, whether it's extracurricular, co-curricular activities, assessments? Sure, I'll throw a, I'll throw a couple things in there. Um, so when I was at the Ford School, I had a lot of different opportunities to be involved outside of the classroom, uh, probably more than Jennifer wanted to see me, I think, on, on some instances. Um, so two examples that I'll throw out, one, um, just it that applies in my professional life today. Um, so there's an every year there is a student member of the alumni board. Um, so my second year I was a member of the alumni board. And while at the time I don't think I truly appreciated the experience that I was getting in terms of the exposure of participation on a board, um, today I support 
um, kind of one of the senior leaders in my company and his participation in one of our trade association boards. So at the time, I definitely saw it as an opportunity to be involved in the Ford School in a different way, to meet alumni through the Ford School. But now I kind of take those experiences from participating in those board meetings and think about it and apply it to kind of the work that I do today, um, just in terms of I've got a brief up, make sure that um, my leader is ready to participate in those conversations and pr provide our perspective. And I think that that was really kind of a leadership opportunity that I took as part of per my, you know, education at Ford that really applies in a very different way as part of my work today. Um, so that's one example. And I think another example is, um, I think that this is still going. There's a partnership with the policy school at the University of Toronto, um, where every year there's kind of a case competition, so to speak, um, between students at the Ford School and students at the University of Toronto. And, and my second year of graduate school, we went to Toronto, which required finding someone to manage the logistics of getting 25 Ford students to Toronto and back. Um, and so while that may seem um, like a little bit of a bizarre task to call a leadership experience, um, it, there's something about having the responsibility of getting your classmates uh, to a place, executing the conference and then getting back uh, that really kind of teaches you how to manage large scale efforts. Um, just you know, not only in from a classroom perspective, but taking that back um, and saying, you know, how, how would I do this differently, learning a little bit more about management um, in a bit of a weird way uh, in terms of getting people to Canada and back all in one place piece. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else? I'll jump in, Jennifer. I think this is maybe an, in, an interesting way to think about leadership and not quite what you're looking for. But um, I um, uh, and I saw there was a question in the chat too about location. So this maybe ties into that a little bit. But um, I part part of a small part of why I chose the Ford School, actually not the biggest part, was that I was really excited to be back home. I'm from Michigan and to get a chance to be near Detroit and all the really exciting things that were happening there with so many talented, smart um, people working for that community. Um, and ultimately, I, you, you see, I'm not in Detroit, I'm in Pittsburgh, um, and had kind of a, um, this is where my husband's from is Pittsburgh, and we decided the best thing for our family was to, to move to Pittsburgh. But it kind of threw a wrench in some of my initial plans. Um, and uh, Jennifer remembers <laughs> probably <laughs> some of those long conversations at her office. Um, but I think one thing that really helped me, um, you know, I had built this whole network in Detroit and New York, which is where I was before, but Jennifer um, made some really incredible connections for me. There are Ford alums in Pittsburgh, they're, they're everywhere. Um, and actually through a Ford alum is how I heard about the job that I'm in now. So um, direct connection there. But then in, on top of that, I think I was confident in my ability to reach out to folks and network. Um, so. I did a lot of cold emailing to um, pretty senior folks in the city. So people running organizations, senior folks in government to learn about what was happening in Pittsburgh and to kind of get my foot in the door. Um, and people were incredibly responsive. And I had a lot of coffee with a lot of really interesting senior people who um, I still keep in touch with and meet in my work all the time. And I think that um, that that networking and that comfort, like comfort with networking comes from some of the skills I got it for, but also um, there were just tons and tons of um, opportunities to meet folks. It, we have these like alumni lunches or, or you know, um, career roundtables where you'd get to meet alumni and talk to folks. And that really helped to build some of my confidence too and being able to reach out and become well-connected in a brand new city. So a little, maybe not exactly the answer you were looking for, Jennifer, but. No, that it, absolutely, like leaders model the way. So the opportunity for us to engage with alumni, have students engage with alumni, it's modeling the way in the way that you guys are now modeling for for prospective students on what do you do with this degree and and who could I be, be in five years or two years or 10 years? Uh, and I think Claire's talking about being involved with the alumni board as well. Like it gives you that opportunity and we do that. We do that very intentionally through career services with um, alumni mock interviews, alumni office hours, 
Uh, we do something this year called 40 Fridays. Uh, and we, we normally do an annual DC trip, but obviously with COVID that is being altered. So we're taking the opportunity to go bigger and better uh, in a virtual world. And we're gonna do three days of career panels and alumni connections and opportunities. We're building in a trivia a Ford School Trivia Night that will flow into a, um, an opportunity to go into any number of breakout rooms on different policy areas. And we're including alums all around the world. So as of right now, we've got like six countries represented and, and 15 different US states, uh, alums from different states involved. So, you know, COVID has been horrendous, um, but we have used the, the reality of being virtual to see what are the opportunities that we can, can make, you know, come from this. So, um, yeah, those are all the kinds of programs. And so with that, I guess I want to ask the panelists as well, because part of this was about how, um, about the services of graduate career services. Some of you have already alluded to this, but are there other things that you um, tapped into from employers, from programs from uh, leadership assessments that added value to your experience from uh, what, what Graduate Career Services offers? I'll hop in on that one. Um, so I noted earlier that right after leaving the Ford School, um, I spent some time in consulting, really working with a lot of public sector clients and healthcare clients. Um, and that was an opportunity that was made possible for me by the Career Center. Um, no if, ands, or buts about that. Uh, so, you know, Accenture had come and recruited on campus. And I think the really great thing about that was not only did the Career Center open up the door for that um, role to become an opportunity for me, but because I had a good relationship with the Ford School, Accenture sent me back to do recruiting activities, which was another learning and development activity for me as a professional individual. Um, so it, I kind of got the best of both worlds in terms of not only having the opportunity to have Ford set me up with uh, a great uh, career choice that coming out of uh, policy school, but also have the opportunity to cycle back around, cycle back around on the back end, um, and learn about um, kind of different interviewing experiences and things like that because of my connection to the Ford School. Yeah, I would say um, the Bonnet Fellowship was probably the most valuable thing for me in terms of um, setting myself up for my career after Ford. Um, and and graduate career services um, was was I think you know just incredibly supportive in making sure that my experience was a good one. Um, it's really great if I think Bonet is a great thing for people who actually intend to stay in the city of Detroit. Um, obviously, anyone else, you know, it's a great learning experience, but it really helped me put my foot in the door. The other advantage of uh, being in Bonnet is it comes a time at Ford where everyone is stressed out about their internship. And you have a number of folks who still don't know and, and you know, rest assured that you will find something. You There is enough support to help you do that. Um, but I remember starting the year and I knew where my internship was. <laughs> and the only other thing that I had to think about was what did I wanna make out of this internship opportunity because Internships can be, you know, they can be very exciting and very um, useful, or you can just be kind of writing a report that doesn't go anywhere or somewhere in the world. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I went in and I had already kind of sat down and had coffee with a few people that I knew in Detroit. Um, and, and I let my manager know, I'm like, hey, you know, I know I work for you, but I'd really like to work in this other area as well. So how can I do both? And really setting yourself up to do, um, to go into the areas that you want to go into. I think that was really valuable. And, and Ford provided a lot of that support to help me um, think through how I find my way because um, especially being like a first generation um, college graduate. Um, I from the city of Detroit, from the immigrant community there. Like I didn't know how to navigate these professional spaces, and I didn't know how to advocate for myself in professional spaces. And Ford did provide a lot of that support. And honestly, my peers, I had a lot of peers who were like, "Hey, this is this is what you say. This is what you do. This is how you ask for what you need." And that was very valuable. Awesome. Thank you. So. Um... 
So let's talk about Detroit and, and the location issue. I know that it came up in the chat and I know it's often a question. Does, does everyone go to Detroit, right? If I, is, if I wanna be in California city government, is this the right school for me? So if you guys can share a little bit about the reach of what you know your classmates are doing and what you've had access to, um, that'd be great to address some of those questions. Maybe I can start. Um, so first I'll say that Ann Arbor is probably the best college town in America. I mean, you can look at the rankings. They typically have them near the top. I, I love Ann Arbor. It's such a great college town to be. Um, and uh, I mean, I, that's probably obvious. I stayed there for three degrees. Uh, I, I, I couldn't pulled away. So uh, Ann Arbor is just such a great town. It's such a great place to be. Um, and then I think the proximity to Detroit, like, you know, Claire and Luz and others mentioned, um, it's huge. There are so many things happening in Detroit from a policy perspective that, you know, it makes you want to tap into it. I had the opportunity to think about my policy internship uh, in Geneva, working with the UNHCR, the High Commission for Refugees, um, or Detroit Health Department. And, you know, for some people that might be an obvious, this was in 2016, so uh, things were ch a little bit different back then. But for me, it was, it was really obvious to stay in Detroit and to want to work in that context, um, because what you gain from a local government perspective is so transferable across so many sectors, whether it's global work, whether it's national state, county work. Um, and so I think that proximity to so many exciting things in Wayne County and Detroit, um, and then living in Ann Arbor, if that's what you choose to do, um, honestly, it's, it's one of the most exciting places to be right now, Southeast Michigan. So um, I, I highly, highly endorse. Yeah, I have friends from my class who are all over the country. So, and probably also international, but I have friends in Denver and in California and in Portland, Oregon and in Portland, Maine. And, you know, of course a good contingent in DC and Chicago as well. Um, but folks are kind of nice and nice and spread out. And I think, um, you know, like I said, I'm here in Pittsburgh which you wouldn't think there'd be Ford alum here but there are. And I just hired a BA Ford alum to be a, on staff as well. So we're, we're building slowly but surely building the contingent here in Pittsburgh as well. I mean, I would say in terms of um, access to the rest of the world, the University of, Mich of Michigan as a whole is a force. There is nowhere in the world you will go that you that if you wear a Michigan shirt, you won't find someone who will say go blue anywhere. You know, I've um, I've gone um, as far as, you know, Ecuador and the Netherlands in a Michigan hoodie and people are like, Yay. <laughs> and and the Ford Alumni Network is um, no different. We're very tight, very connected. Um, Spirit Days will always help you uh, find people and you'll be surprised you say they really had a Ford Spirit Day over there. <laughs> um, not surprising, um, but but um, I think the proximity to Detroit too um, and, and the University of Michigan continues to build that system of connection um, they do have a bus that runs, you know, regularly back and forth. Ann Arbor is great. There's a lot to do, but there's also a lot to do in Detroit. Um, I actually, as part of my work with Wayne County, am working on the Detroit Center of Innovation that the University of Michigan has announced they are building in the heart of downtown Detroit. So a whole new um, area of work around um, new technologies and, and fun things that is coming in the years to come. Um, and I will, I will fight anyone over this. Southwest Detroit has the best Mexican food in the US. I'm serious. <laughs> I will help you find it if you need it. Um, and, and I'm sure we can talk about all the other ethnic uh, enclaves that we have in the Detroit metro area serving you know, the best food you can find anywhere from African to Mexican um, to you know, Asian food. It's, it's all there. Um, it really is an experience. And um, yeah, I would love to show people around Detroit if you come out this way. All right, Louise, I'm gonna take you up on that. <laughs> um, so I know we are at time. I don't see any more questions. So I, I just wanna turn it back to the panelists for any last advice you would give to students who are um, trying to decide whether to apply or if they apply, is this the right school for them? Is this the right time? What would you offer from your experience? You know, I, I, I've been thinking of uh, Jennifer's comment at the onset about how uh, you didn't really think about this as a event that would touch the pandemic, but yet we're all talking about the pandemic. And I think the comments that Claire, Megan and Luz mentioned, I think also touch upon a sort of theme today, which is just interdisciplinary and, and, and flexibility. 
Um, and I think, you know, Luz mentioned this with the internship opportunities, but if you're a prospective student, that means you think this is the next step in your career, you think this is, you know, a good change, uh, a good time to change careers or a good time to supplement your career with a really robust degree. I think it's really important to remember that what I, what I think the Ford School does really well is it takes in people from all backgrounds, um, all sort of competencies and proficiencies and says, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I'm someone who started grad school thinking that I wanted to work in mental health context in refugee camps, uh, you know, uh, in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, it's a passion area of mine, but I think the openness of being able to have a skill set that does, I think, still allow me maybe next week if I decide to go work in those refugee camps and also at the same time work at the federal government during a once in a century pandemic, I think is a testament to the kind of skills, perspectives and personalities that you'll meet at the Ford School. And I think it starts with the admissions team and Beth and the career uh, services that Jennifer uh, directs. And so um, I think it's really important to keep in mind that if you're someone who uh, has some certainty over what you want to do or no certainty about what you want to do, I think the Ford School is a really good place to explore your interests and passions and uh, you'll come out on the other end of it better for it. Yeah, one thing um, that may, hopefully you can get a sense of from hearing from, from all of us is that I think the um, if you care about making an impact on society and social good, I think that that's a huge reason why I chose the Ford School in Michigan. I think it's a really big focus and it's part of part of every class that I took and every person that I spoke to, they wanna do good. Um, and I think that's a really cool, unique thing about our program. Um, I know it's a, it's a stressful time, it's hard decisions to make and it's lots of work, but um, I promise you'll be okay. And I think with, certainly for me with Ford, um, you know, I, I got out of it what I put into it. So, um, you know, I, I was looking for a network, I was looking for skills, I was looking for experiences and all of the things that I kind of intentionally set out to, to get for myself, I did, did get. And then I know that I had peers and classmates who were looking for other things and that's what they got as well. So it's really a place um, and it's really a cool, you know, grad school is a really unique, cool time to do some you know, be selfish and think about yourself and do some self introspection and um, discover what you want to do and, and who you want to serve. So um, I, I love Michigan, go blue. <laughs> I love that. And I, before you guys wrap up, I want to add to that, that one of the things that we are um, adding, you know, building on what Megan just said is uh, we are we are planning to offer all students, all graduate MPP students on the time of their internship, the opportunity to work with a leadership coach in the time that they are out in, on that assignment, um, right? For that very reason of helping to put together the tools and the who, right? The how, the how am I showing up at work? Um, and we're super excited about that. Uh, and it's, it's pretty innovative and um, I, I have the joy of putting that all together and finding coaches for 100 students uh, and, and actually like I'm totally geeked about doing that. So if you choose to come here, we are hopeful that that will be continuing uh, in next year as well. Be jealous alums, be jealous. <laughs> Other closing advice. Yeah, I would say, I think that there's a place in the Ford School for almost everyone. Like if you're really set and you think, you know, and you know what you're doing or where you want to go, like it'll help you kind of go deeper into that place. If you're trying to figure it out, um, it's a really good place to, to figure out what you want to do and, and dabble in different things and, you know, do internships or whatnot. And if you think you know what you want to do, you know, there's a good chance uh, that you will come in and, you know, change your mind or find something else or just go in any direction. Like Ali said, you know, you could, I, I also work in the immigrant rights space as well as economic development. And I have switched back and forth so many times, so seamlessly. One day I'm running an immigrant, you know, um, ID program. Um, and, you know, another year I'm working on grants for small businesses. And I think into the future, as I develop those things, I'm learning how to merge them together and work at the intersection of immigrant rights and economic development. And so there really is room for you to find yourself or you know, go deeper into what you love if you already found it.
And I think, you know, everybody said, <laughs> said a lot today. Um, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, great, like advice across the board. So I think the one thing that I would say is clearly, you know, all of us got really versatile educations at the at the Ford School. Um, lots of different skill sets, lots of different perspectives. And I think the advice that I've gotten in the past is really look at those classes that are available. What are you going to be learning in the classroom? And then I think a lot of us have shared a lot of personal tidbits. And I think that's another piece that you can put into your decision making matrix. But what makes you excited? Um, and you should really kind of look at the class lists. You should take anything that you heard today, you should go surf LinkedIn, see what people from the Ford School are doing. Um, and I think that those will all give you some ideas as to kind of what your opportunities would look like coming out of the Ford School. And I think you've heard a lot from us about your experiences and totally echo, this is a difficult time to be thinking about what's next because it seems like we're in a really um, tough spot and, and then it, it may not change for a while. But um, I think trying to think about what future you wants is also really part, big, big important part of this discussion. Um, and so think about that as you're trying to weigh what your options are and what's next thing for you to do. Absolutely, thank you. You guys have so much wisdom. Uh, I can't thank you enough for participating today and sharing your stories and uh, just an incredible amount of impact that the four of you are having uh, on the world and all of you uh, involved in, in COVID responses in different ways. So um, totally, totally appreciate your support. Like, you know, claps to all of you, applause to all of you. Um, and for those of you out there thinking about uh, Ford and applying, I just encourage you to get in the game, right? apply and see what happens. You can decide, you know, if you're admitted, you can decide then, but if you don't uh, move forward with the application, it's not going to happen. So it's all, everyone's career unfolded incrementally and just thinking about what are the first steps that I need to be taking. And hopefully today gave you some insight into um, what folks do with this degree and why Ford is, um, what stands out for all of them about why Ford was a good place. So um, I think we'll stay on for a little bit longer, but uh, I wanna be sensitive to time. We already ran over a little bit. Yes, happy holidays to everyone. And um, hopefully we'll be hearing from some of you soon in your applications. Awesome. All right, well, how's it going? How's vaccine distribution? Or what can you tell us, Ollie? I am, I am feeling so hopeful. I mean, I've been sort of, I have a hop in my step the last couple of weeks because of the news with the vaccines. And actually today the news was even- That's so nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just such a dark time, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling really motivated. And uh, I think uh, we should get to herd immunity uh, sometime, you know, summer or late summer, 2021. So uh, we might have a normal summer, guys. Are, you, oh, are you giving man. us tips on when to book our next flight? <laughs> I, I, I can't officially endorse that. I should have started off with the stipulation. I, I, I represent myself here, not the NIH, but uh, I, I am feeling very hopeful about a normal, uh, at least fall 2021. Yeah, we did hear um, here at Wayne County that we have an allotment coming in, in over the weekend, but um, still very small, still thinking of how do we cover our essential workers, our health care workers yeah. first. And um, apparently government employees are going to be up there in, in the group of essential people at some point. So let's see how that goes. Wow. Maybe I'll be on a beach by March. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. Gosh, wow. I just want to go hug my mom. She's in an yeah. assisted living and has basically been in lockdown and I just, it's been brutal. Mm -hmm. so that's what yeah. I, that's my hope. Claire, did Claire disappear? Oh, she must have jumped off. No, I'm still here. Oh, there you are. Um, Claire, what are you hearing on the Humana side? Um, I, I, I think Ali really summed it up. I mean, fall. Yeah. And this is me personally speaking, but like, I, I think there's a natural inflection point around September. So that's what I'm, I'm at least <laughs> hoping for. Yeah. But yeah. 
Um, it'll be interesting when the, the second vaccine gets administered because that one's a lot easier to manage. Um, so we'll yeah. keep our fingers crossed for, for Moderna to come through at the end of this week. <laughs> so Yeah, awesome. Uh, Jaleel, do you want to jump on? Or put your question in the chat. Either is fine. Um, I can I can just speak if that's okay. Sure. So um, I have a question for Ali. Um, uh, so you've you've mentioned that you've had an experience like working in the Middle East and North of Africa. I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm really planning on um, pursuing an MPP on on the field of international policy and uh, focusing on the current uh, conflicts in Yemen and. Uh, the Arab Israeli conflict as well. Um, I would I would really um like if if you can touch on how would like the international uh center program at the Ford School would help on focusing on like uh, the political side of uh, the conflicts there aside from the humanitarian one. Um like in, in, in like since you've already like had like a touch uh, over the region over there. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, I, I think there are so many professors at the Ford School. John Chachari comes to mind. His class was just so influential in thinking about geopolitical uh, issues and how they impact, you know, health and education. And so I think uh, there's such a there's such a wealth of knowledge at the Ford School. And I think um, I, I wasn't necessarily involved with the International Development Group, um, if, if, if one does exist, Jennifer, maybe you can clarify. Um, but I, um, you know, everything that I do is sort of the, making the local global, making the global global local. Um, and, you know, Susan Waltz uh, was, was, was one of my mentors at the, at the Ford School. Uh, she's someone who's had extensive experience in the Middle East. And so she and I talked a lot about my experiences in Lebanon and Turkey and Jordan. Um, and uh, I think that there's just such a wealth of resources, especially with the professors there. Um, and I did my public health internship in Lebanon working in the refugee camp. So I think that context of being able to think about what foreign policy is for social policy is something that will become a lot more robust with the Ford School training. So um, highly encourage you to recommend, uh, highly encourage you to reach, uh, to reach out if you uh, have anything that you want to talk about more personally. Sure. Thing. Yeah, and I, Thank I you so just... much for that. I sure, would go ahead. Add to that that um, this is going to be a trivia question for the trivia contest. So, uh, alums, you're going to get the answer to this. But the number, the the federal agency with the greatest number of Ford School alums is the State Department, and it's not what people would have naturally thought, right? HHS comes up because HHS is so big, but we have more alums in, in state, both in the foreign service and the civil service um, than any other agency, which is, is, it speaks to the strength of the international, which just wasn't represented in the, the immediate career paths of, of folks now, but it is it is huge. And actually I can think of an alum that was um, with USAID who was on assignment in Yemen for a couple of years. Oh, that's great. Cause Yemen is uh, where I was born and raised and uh... One of the things that I really like motivates me for going to the Ford School is actually tackling this. Um, like it's it's it has been labeled like as the worst humanitarian crisis, and I uh, I really want to see how um, like working with other um, students at the Ford School and see what's their perspective on tackling these foreign policies and what 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 actual policies we can we can establish in order to kind of like tackle these humanitarian humanitarian issues that we see in the Middle East. Well, yeah, th yeah, thank you guys so much. And I'll, I'll reach out to, um, like, I, I, I can't remember exactly what's his name, uh, Ali, uh, the professor that you've mentioned his name. So I think take a look at the International Policy Center on the website. And um, the, John Chachari is the director there, uh, but those the faculty that are involved in IPC. Sure thing. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. I, I truly appreciate that. You bet, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I guess we will wrap it. And um, it's just so always so good to see you all. So good to see you. Thanks so much for the invite. Thank you. Great. And thank uh, you, for you guys us. will be involved in the Career Expo and the trivia night. Now you know one sure. of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Great all to right. see you all. Good to see Bye. you. Take care. Bye -bye. Talk soon. Bye.